Hello, my noble band of outlaws. Hello, Samurai, coming at you live with a video. Bit of an update video. As I said in the review of the Cold Steel Warrior series katana, that I would be making it into a bushcrafting sword. And I've done just that. From the very, very, <laughs> Very utilitarian uh, paracord Edo wrap to the extra already gutted paracord uh, wrapping on the Saya. I have not sharpened this or done any other kind of mods to it. Aside from rewrapping the hilt, and the Kashra is now uh, rock solidly in place. I will be doing the cutting video of this. I will be doing the uh, official cutting video for this sword in a little while. But, for the time being, let's see if this edge can pass the paper test. Now this was the instruction manual for one of the uh, pieces of furniture that I put together. But now that it's put together, I don't need it anymore, so. Alright. Having some trouble. There we go. This is actually very thin paper. And the edge is having a very... Oh, there we go. Hard time biting into it. As we saw just now, it will do it if it can bite into it, but... This is very floppy paper. It feels sharp, but I can actually physically see the burr on this blade. This is a very utilitarian edge. If I hold it to the light, I can see all kinds of different little speckles of slightly dull, slightly dull areas on the blade, and those are flat spots in the edge. And it's basically... I want to say this thing has the edge of a worn down kitchen knife at this point. In stark contrast to the Warrior Katana, which I've done work on and recently fully cleaned and resharpened. In stark contrast. to this edge. Yeah. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Outlaw Samurai, why did you go through the trouble of buying the war, the smaller Warrior Series Katana when you have the Warrior O Katana, which would probably do better for bushcraft, after chopping down a fucking tree with it? Video, I believe, is on the Cold Steel playlist. On my cold steel playlist. The reason being is that in forested areas where you have brush and all kinds of different other bits and bobs that you have to maneuver around, uh, a shorter blade is ideal for cramped conditions. That is basically 
pretty much standard knowledge. If you're in a big open space like a ballroom or a dining hall, or hell, a school gym for instances, it doesn't matter the length of blade you use because you have the wide open space to do it. But if I'm in like this kind of room, well, you can see I can keep the sword much tighter to my body and kind of flick it out if I have to. And even just, I can swing this sword relatively easily through here without having to worry so much about hitting anything. More so than the old katana, which is far larger. That's the first reason. Second reason is that I can actually, and I think I even did this in the review of the sword, the first one, where I tied it to my back and literally just pulled it out and resheathed it. I wanted a sword that I could strap onto my backpack like this behind me. I just do this kind of in this position behind me all I have to do is draw it just hold on to the bottom of the scabbard pull down slightly pull up and draw again Metatron uh, proved this if you want to see where I learned this technique I learned it from Metatron uh, go check out his review on drawing from the back. Very informative. And the backpack idea I actually got from Scalagrim. So shout outs to Metatron and Scalagrim, kind of combining your uh, two methods here. Now, there's one thing I want to say about back scabbard or drawing from the back. And that's Shatter versus his Shabbard, as he calls it. I'm actually... I actually think there's a way to improve the Shabbard. Whereas you make the Shabbard a combination scabbard and backpack. Or, if you don't want to do the whole full-size backpack, like the... Bags and Navy, not Navy, or Army, that, the, the long tube bags that you pull shut on the top and you throw over your back. Like, attach a bag similar to that to the outside of the shabbard, and then you'd have a scabbard and backpack combo. That way you could carry your sword and your uh, adventuring supplies at once. You could call it the Shack Pack. Or the Shack Packer. Shack Packer. It almost sounds like Shack Packer. <laughs> but Shack Packer. You could do that. Or you could actually take mini, like, smaller pouches and glue them to the outside or stitch them to the outside of the scabbard or find some way to secure little pouches on the outside of the scabbard or just one long cylindrical pouch that you could carry little odds and ends in like a sharpening stone uh, cleaning cloths, oil you could basically carry the entire maintenance kit for your swords or any bladed weapons with the weapon itself something I don't th Remember exactly if uh, Shad ever thought of this. But if any of y'all watch Shadiversity and know Shad personally, uh, you can relay this video to him. And I will be doing the cutting video for this sword in a little bit. I think I'm one of the only YouTubers that have done a lot of Cold Steel uh, katana reviews, aside from like Maddie's. Not Maddie. Not Maddie. Sorry. Matthew Jensing and Mr. Excalibur. So also shout outs to both of them. But until next time, my noble band of outlaws, outlaw samurai tells all y'all be crazy rednecks, be safe when using your weapons. I'm out. Peace and shout outs to Ma to Metatron, Scalagram, Matthew Jensing, and Mr. Excalibur. See ya.